and thank you so much for joining us again for our Workspace Spark expert interviews. Today we have someone, she's actually my dearest friend, so I'm so grateful that she loves me enough that I can interview her, but she actually has great information. You know, sometimes when you have your friends and you don't quite know what they do, and then you're in a conversation, I'm like, I totally need you for our subscribers. So, so excited to have you on here. Latrice Ferguson, we call her the feedback doctor. Now, this doesn't just happen in corporate. She also gives us feedback. <laughs> so I'm so grateful to have her here with us. And I'm going to let Latrice introduce herself to our audience and tell us a little about yourself. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for having me on. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with y'all today. Um, my name is Latrice Ferguson, and I am the feedback doctor. So I have worked in just about every industry. I've worked in corporate. I've worked for a Fortune 500 company. I've worked for a large nonprofit, worked for the federal government, and now um, I've launched my own business. Oh, I also work in higher, have worked in higher ed as well. So what I found through my um, journey is that feedback is feedback no matter where you are, no matter what situation you find yourself in. And so I'm excited to talk to y'all about that today. Awesome. You know, when I hear the word feedback, it's usually something that scares me. And it's always thought to me as something negative. Why do you think that the word feedback has this negative connotation. It's interesting, right? Because I think a lot of times when, when you hear it, you think of immediately, what have I done wrong? Or, you know, and so natively, when you think of the word feedback, it's like an audio thing, right? If you listen to like waves or sound waves, you hear like, there's something like in the background that I hear, there's something reverberating. And that's how I like to think of feedback. It's just something in the background that I can consider to take an action on, or I can consider and not take an action on. So if we reframe it as a choice, I think that sort of helps with that. But a lot of times people think of it as a negative thing, which I'm hoping to change that connotation through more conversations about feedback. Which is why I think so many people need you, right? Because I haven't really found a company that talks about feedback in the way you do. For example, the analogy you just gave us, you're right. That is actually the term, what the definition of feedback, but we don't look at it in that way. In a corporate setting, when people mention feedback, it is always looked at as something that I did wrong, um, <clears throat> but it could be great feedback. So I think that is great as well. Now, do you believe that feedback is essential to leadership? Absolutely. I absolutely do because I also sort of sometimes use this analogy of if you are with friends, and you are going to the bathroom and you walk out of the bathroom and you have tissue stuck to the bottom of your shoe, right? Would you prefer someone to let you walk around <laughs> with the tissue stuck to the bottom of your shoe? Or would you prefer them to tell you, hey, you got some tissue stuck at the bottom of your shoe? <clears throat> most people would say, please tell me. And most people say, I want you to be direct. I want you to like give me that feedback until you receive it. And so there's, a, there's an art to sort of giving feedback, there's an art to receiving it, but it is essential in your growth because otherwise you would not know that that tissue was stuck to the bottom of your shoes. You could be going around doing crazy things and nobody ever says anything and you don't know. So that's why I believe it's really essential. It's like an essential tool to leadership development. Wow, and exactly. I would think, I, I wasn't gonna tell me, tap me on the shoulder and tell me I have the tissue, but, I have been, again, using my own experiences, have said I want direct feedback and received it and felt some kind of way about it and didn't know how to internalize those feelings and then maybe got upset with my boss or manager when I asked for them to be direct. So I do think it's important that we first think about what we really mean when we say that, but also learning that art because I'm sure there is a balance of um, giving and receiving. And direct doesn't have to be mean, right? Sometimes people think when I, oh, I'm just being direct and it's just rude and nasty. And giving feedback is not about being rude and nasty, right? It's about giving you an opportunity to see things the way that I see it. And it's really an opportunity to invite a conversation because I'm giving you feedback based on my lens, but I'm not all knowing, right? And so the best way to give feedback is to sort of invite a conversation, a dialogue about what you're seeing and maybe 
you see something that the other person is unable to see and you can have a very rich conversation and in turn enrich your relationship, which I think is amazing. Ooh, that's why I think it's so important, right? And I think that I don't feel like managers or leaders sometimes even talk. I don't think when I was putting this together and looking through questions to ask and interview you, I honestly thought about my own experiences and I don't ever hear, remember hearing as I was going into leadership, anything, someone coaching me about feedback. I remember coaching me on leadership and <clears throat> being empathetic and different things, but I really can't remember a time where as I was growing as a leader, someone said, do you know how to give feedback? How do you receive feedback? And that's something in dialogue I don't think I remember hearing. Yeah. It's kind of uncommon. And I think it may be because in some ways, positionality puts you in a place where it gets really quiet. So the mm -hmm. higher you start to rise, people are trying to please you and people are trying to, you know, tell you the things that you want to hear. And so as you get, if you don't learn it fundamentally, when you start out as a leader, the higher you rise, the less likely people are to actually be honest with you. And that's really sad, but I got some tips and tricks for you to use, even if you're, you know, you're risen in your career, because you can always ask for feedback. Okay, well, let's get into this nitty gritty. So okay. let's go. We're not going to ask you for all of your tricks and tips okay. because I'm going to reach out to you, right? But give me like two or three um, tips and tricks now, giving you who our audience is. Mm -hmm. So we have um, our subscribers from our excellent workspace, Box, and they are leaders. But then we have some people who, of course, are uh, middle level managers. So mm -hmm. give us some tips. Yeah. So let's, you want to start with giving or receiving? Ooh, let's go with receiving. That was okay. all, all for me. <laughs> so receiving feedback, the first thing that I would say is that you really, what you have to do is you have to focus on the content. So focus on what people are saying to you versus who's saying it. And for me, full transparent, that, that's hard. Because if I know a lot about you, if I see you, you know, doing something that you're going to try to coach me on or whatever, right? The more I know, the harder it is for me to remove the person and just really listen to what they're saying. So mm -hmm. step one is just focus on the content. There's, I don't care who it is. There's got to be something in what they're saying that I could probably learn from. So that's one thing I would say. I Ooh, think that's, that's hard though. It's not, that's the hardest one for me. That's really, really hard, right? But I'm a work in progress. So we don't <laughs> I think another thing is this, this idea of when you receive feedback, we're not trying to create, I guess what I would call like little feedback receiving robots. So someone gives you feedback. You're not, I'm not saying you just sit there and take it all in, right? Because there could be, again, something that they don't know, a piece of information that they're unaware of, and you want to sort of clarify those things. But there's a fine line between clarifying and over defending and over explaining. Because be a man. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what it makes you look like when you're getting defensive, right? But asking questions and checking for understanding and saying, maybe, Vanessa, what I heard you say is, very different from that wasn't me I didn't do that what are you talking about you know two different things so you want to try to try to avoid defending being becoming defensive but don't think that that means you can't say nothing right and then um, I'm gonna give you two more one other one is for people who remember when I said the higher you rise sort of the quieter it gets right the biggest thing that I can tell you in that space is when you receive to receive feedback, you might just have to ask, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about when was the last time somebody gave me some feedback and you can't remember when, then you're going to have to ask because nine times out of 10, people aren't psychologically safe enough to come to you and give you that feedback. No knock on you. A lot of times it's really just your position that causes them to have that fear. So you have to ask for feedback. And then the last, oh, I'm sorry, what you gonna say? Vanessa? No, that psychological safety right there, right? Because you don't, I just put a pin real quick because mm -hmm. the lead, the employee manager supervisor role has to have a level of psychological safety for me to feel comfortable in giving you honest feedback, both ways. Both ways, both ways. 
Mm. And it's one of those things. That term before. Yeah, no, it's it's that's a whole like it's a whole thing. Um, I was gonna I forgot what I was gonna say, but the last about that, but I'm sure it'll come back to me. But the last um, thing that I was going to say is whenever you receive feedback, I make it a habit to just say, thank you. Like mm. just the first thing I say is thank you so much for the feedback. Right. And I liken it to like, people say feedback is a gift. Right. And sometimes you receive gifts that you like and you immediately open that gift and you put it on and you start wearing it. Right. And other times you receive a gift. <laughs> You know, you put it in a re-gifting closet, you put it on the shelf and give it to somebody else at some other time, but you still yeah. say thank you because our mamas raised us right, right? So right. say thank you to the person that's giving you the feedback because they took a risk. They took a risk to give you that feedback. They did. And if I'm honest, there's there have been times I had unsolicited feedback. I did not want it. Um, but there was something in there that was like, hmm, I didn't know that about myself and I do need to fix it. And so I do think it's important because someone is taking a risk on, as, and I imagine as hard as it is for me sometimes to receive feedback, it is probably just as hard for a leader to provide feedback. So, you know, being able to take that risk and not having someone mad at you, because at the end of the day, you don't want that either. So mm -hmm. I could totally see that. Yeah. It's interesting you say unsolicited feedback. If you go back to where you put that pin in psychological safety, somebody felt safe enough with you to give you that mm. feedback. You got to remember that. Like there's something in it where this person feels confident enough to give it to me. And that's a gift. So you got to remember, even if it's not what you want to hear. Thank you so much for having the courage to, to step up and tell me that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So unsolicited, I think to me, but the person giving it to me had to feel a little bit of comfort mm -hmm. for them to say it to me. Ooh, that's good. Do you think feedback is effective though? So like take out, let's be realistic of some people and how they receive it. So they're defensive mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all those things. They don't have these tips. Do you mm -hmm. think that you've seen where feedback has been effective? Yeah, so... Yeah, I'll take that question into two parts, right? So the first part I'll say is feedback is definitely effective because what'll happen, okay, so I lead a team of people, right? And if they come from, um, and I'm trying not to use all these sophisticated words, but there's something called trauma-informed leadership. Okay. I'll look that up. Okay, but, okay. <laughs> we don't got time to talk about it today, but I'll come back and talk about that. But um so if you report to me now and I'm an active giver of feedback, right? But where you came from, they gave you no feedback. When you get no feedback, you are literally teaching the person that their behavior is correct. So if no one ever gave you feedback before, then you come over here with me, the feedback doctor that's giving feedback left and right. What you think they saying about me? She always <laughs> giving unsolicited feedback. Here she come again, you know? <laughs> and so I really feel like it's a gift and it is, I am like literally pouring into you, right? Mm -hmm. When someone else did not respect you enough to do that. And mm -hmm. so you think on the surface, I prefer not to get it, particularly if it's going to be negative. But if you flip that around, someone cares enough to in invite you into dialogue about a topic. They don't have to be right. You don't have to be right. But what it is, is it's helping you to think about and reframe things into a different way. And maybe their perspective will give you some insight that you want to take. And maybe not. But the, the conversation is where the magic is. Mm, I don't think many people are having conversations. They are not. Most people are not. Girl, yesterday yeah. I was working with a team who literally two of the leaders said, we have not talked in two years. Like literally have not talked. So I was like, do y'all remember even what you mad about? <laughs> they didn't even remember. So people are not talking. People are not people talking. Are not talking. Mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of being busy. Yeah. I also think that people are not as self-aware. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of my own inner work, but I don't think a lot of people do. So I can totally see how being defensive and not being okay with feedback. But I do like the flip. I do like thinking about, well, putting myself in those people's shoes. You know, they had to think of me highly enough to provide me some information that they think can make me better. 
right? And I don't think and I've then ever. You thought. have a decision to make. It's up to you to decide what you're going to do with it. They can't make mm. it. The mm. other piece that I was going to say, Vanessa, is um, about whether or not we think, I think feedback is effective. Are there some tools to help you with feedback? So you may have heard of like 360 assessments or things like that. I think they are effective if used properly. Okay. Um, right. Let's so, so a 360 is for those of you who may not be familiar, it's where you give anonymous feedback um, to peers, to direct reports, to supervisors. And typically the person that's receiving the feedback gets to choose who they want to get the feedback from. Okay. So you talked about self-work. I, people who do self-work, I want to hear from someone who I think I might not have the best relationship with so I can figure out how to make it better. But if you choose all people who are going to just tell you what you want to hear, then that tool becomes slightly ineffective, right? Mm, Because you're just, you're picking people who you know will say nice things, basically. Um, I think the second part of that becomes coaching, right? And so if you get a lot of feedback and you don't know what to do with it, you don't know how to sit with it. Some of us beat ourselves up. It wasn't our intention. Like all of these things come into play when you get that report. And if you don't have a coach or someone who can really help you walk through that and action plan what to do about it, those tools are ineffective. So I think you need the 360 to elicit the feedback, but you also need the coaching to help you figure out what to do next. Right. You need the feedback doctor. You need hey. someone to help coach you completely get it. I also think that, so I have been in companies where I've done 360, I've done Myers-Briggs, I've done other personality tests. Mm-hmm. And then that was it. Yeah. They gave it to us. I now know my numbers or my letters or what spectrum I fall in. And I'm like, oh, okay, born leader, blah, 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 all these things. And then no one circled back. That's an so important I, piece. It's important, right? I've done all those personality tests, but then I learned about myself, but if no one talks to me about what that looks like in the workplace or how do I then use those numbers, those things, that feedback, and how do I then change who I am as an employee or as a leader? I think a lot of people don't ever circle back. I don't know if they just want to check the box and say we gave the personality test, um, but companies I worked for, they never really circle back with it. Now, we talked a little bit about how to receive the um, responses and receiving feedback, definitely saying thank you and acknowledging that it's something you can make a decision. Is there anything else in a response to getting feedback, whether it's positive or negative, that we should be doing? No, I think, I mean, I think there's, there's lots of other things you can do, but if you just start with saying thank you and you try to focus on the content and not the person, just work on them two first. And then once you get that down, come on back. I'll give you some more tools and stuff. But those are, those, are, those are big ones that trip people up. Also that defensiveness. Try not to get defensive, right? So that you can, not, you can keep your brain in a receiving mode versus a shutdown mode. Um, mm. So those are, those are some good tips to start with when receiving feedback. Awesome. Well, how do I ask my boss for feedback mm-hmm. or supervisor? If I'm feeling like I'm not getting feedback, not quite sure how they're feeling about me and my work ethic or how I'm performing. How, what, what do you think is the best way to ask for feedback? It's so complicated, Vanessa. I kid. It is simple as, hey, Vanessa, I've been working on this particular project and I'm wondering from your perspective, how did it go? What do you think I could have done differently? Um, What do you think I did well? What do you think I did well? So it's literally asking the question, but try to ask for something specific. Because remember, a lot of people aren't trained in how to give feedback. So if you just go to your boss and say, so, I mean, how do you think I'm doing? They're going to say, I think you're doing fine or whatever, right? But you want to know on this particular deliverable, this particular project, this particular client relationship I'm managing so that you can get specific actionable things that you can really take and do something with. Um, So when soliciting feedback, I think the key is trying to get as specific as you possibly can. Mm, That's good because I probably would have just asked in general. Mm -hmm. And I probably would not receive the honest feedback I need instead of saying per project or on this thing that I worked on. That's good. 
I didn't think about that. I think one other tip I would do is I would set up some kind of cadence, right? So maybe a monthly or biweekly, whatever it is in your environment that makes the most sense, but kind of get a cadence so that they recognize that you really want it, right? The first time you ask for feedback to someone who's not used to giving it, it'll probably be very general, not because of anything else that they just didn't have time to think about it. And I don't think on the spot like that, right? But if they know next month she's coming back, she's gonna ask me the same thing, you'll start to see that things get a little bit more specific and they see that it's something that you're really into and want to get from them. And so maybe if you can set up some kind of cadence, that also helps. Mm, I think that's good, especially instead of waiting for them to set a cadence. Yeah. I love it. Or I could say, listen, you don't give me enough, any feedback. So I, here's the card of the feedback doctor. I need you to call. I can't do that. I'll do Hello. <laughs> You can just slide on my website. <laughs> I love it. All right. So last question. Are there things that you can do to prepare for feedback, right? So you made a comment about having a mindset uh, of receiving. Is there something we can do, some breathing treatments? What can we do to get our mind and Betty, our, our bodies ready for this feedback? Yeah, I, I don't. That would be sort of your area of expertise. <laughs> Maybe some tapping, some grounding, you know, the stuff you teach me all the time. <laughs> but I would say um, is to just figure out how that just say, I'm not focusing on the person, I'm focusing on the content. What mm -hmm. is it from this conversation that I can glean that will help me be better? And just yeah. really... Remember that when people are giving you feedback, literally nine times out of 10, they are not talking about you as a person, right? Mm -hmm. They're talking about the work, the relationship, so all things that you can do something about, right? And so don't sort of internalize it as you personally, it's that particular interaction. And the beauty of it is that we'll have many, many more interactions um, as time goes along. There's a, a quote, a statement that says something about, it's something like, um, I want to learn from the mistakes of others because I won't live long enough to make all the mistakes myself. Ooh. So you can learn from somebody else's mistakes, right? Then take advantage of that. And that's really what's happening. People have made a mistake or they've seen something through their lens. They're trusting you enough to give you that feedback. Just try not to take it personally. Yeah, back to that four agreements, not taking it personally. Um, well, thank you so much. Two big takeaways that I'm taking away, and I hope our viewers um, are listened in too, is to not work, to focus on the content, mm -hmm. on the context of things and not the person, which I'm totally going to work on. Um, and it's the decision of what I do with that feedback. If, they, if what you're doing is working for you, keep doing that. If for some reason you see that what I'm doing is not necessarily yielding me the results that I want, might be time to do something different. Solicit yeah. a little feedback. Yes, those are two good things. So thank you so much. Please let our audience know how they can find you. Yes, my name is Latrice Ferguson. You can find me on the internet. It's www.latriceferguson.com. And I'd love to chat more with you. Um, I come, I do organizational trainings. I do 360s, um, but all that's listed on my website. And I'd love to connect with each and every one of you. Awesome. Well, we are so grateful to have you. And it sounds like we have to have you back because you dropped some other gems I have to um, spend a little bit more time on. So thank you again. And we cannot wait to see you next time. Bye.